started. Here you go on, do it, Gary. Just go. Hi. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. To tell the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 To tell the I'm truth. Paul Smith. Yeah. So there are a lot of <clears throat> questions about what is eight lock. And every time somebody's on the phone with me, they say, what's eight like? I said, eight people locked together, you can't separate them. And there's been a lot of questions about, you know, what is this thing that's been developed and what are you guys doing? And, and so I thought we would get together and talk about what we built. I mean, it kind of started with an idea and a prototype. And then the first thing was, do you want to record that? And we all got together and said, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's record that. When we got done the first one, we all went, Dennis, what do you want to do? He goes, Let's do it again. And then Juju says, let's do it again. So we kept doing it, let's do it again, until there's just 10 tunes in the can, right? But, you know, the whole idea of three drummers playing completely separate parts and the bass part being completely separate and all the guitar parts being completely separate. And so, Juju, you had an idea about this, what this could be. You should tell everybody what you think of it, about this. Eight Lock is definitely a new experience. They've never, ever even seen anything like this. This is not just hearing it, but visually having three drummers, it's fire. And it's something that's just gonna totally take them by surprise. Most people look at that and they say, uh oh, this could be, <laughs> <laughs> this could be like not good. Not good, right. Not, not good. as soon as they see 12 symbols going across the top of the stage, <laughs> uh oh. Is either that's the other band setting up or there's two bands setting up behind it. But even though it's different parts, it's still one spirit, yeah. one strong lock. Mm -hmm. So you would never know, you know. And that's the key and the secret to eight lock. You'll never know that there's three drummers on that stage. I don't care how you look at it. Only visually. Except by visually. Yeah. Visually, visually, yeah. Visually, visually, yeah. But hearing it. Never know. I know you had an experience, Dennis. You were like, uh, I got my doubts. When you mentioned three guitar players and three drummers, I was like, <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, when you're in the studio with just with one drummer alone, and yeah. you got to mix that, you know, mixing three drummers and three guitar players. Yeah. And as you learned, that's a, a big headache. Well, you started laughing at me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he said... Oh, you didn't know what you signed up for. Uh -oh. It's like, thank God that we got a, a rock over there, bass player. Yeah. yeah. And we got a female singer who sounds unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Who's like uh, front of the project and she's killing it. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's important. So, Greg, yeah. you're taking, a, like, there's three grooves. There's a, a DC groove and a Baltimore funk groove, and you're taking the New Orleans part, too. And so, what do you think about all this? First of all, I know you. <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> that story is not good. Because yeah. I know that once you put your mind to something, yeah. you're going to make it happen. And yeah. I know that when you have your vision, a lot of times people don't see or understand your vision, yeah. but you are right spot on. Mm -hmm. So when you said it, my brain was like, yeah, three drummers. But the heart said, okay, Paul, whatever you want me to do, let's do this. Because I have faith in the, uh, in the leadership. Mm -hmm. The other thing that helps is that you got cats who listen too. I don't know if it's three, a yeah. and all musicians should listen to each other. Three drummers listening to how it fits, I think that's an important thing as well. So yeah, I like playing the uh, New Orleans part because it's like the other, not necessarily syncopated, but it's like just the outside part, you know? It's, it's not in your face, but you still go, oh, what was that? And some of these mm -hmm. students like driving at night, you're gonna be the main drummer. So it's gonna switch around. So what do you think, Mia? This band is, it, it, first of all, it means more to me than y'all think it does. This is like a lifeline, okay? Every time I know that we all have to get together, I'm ecstatic, I'm excited, I'm ready to come to life, I'm ready to get to work. Y'all are just, y'all fill me with the energy. I love it, I love it. And then that transfers, well, to the studio one, but especially on stage, everybody's all pumped and everybody's ready to go, you know? That's infectious you know and hopefully the crowd will see just how much we seem to love it Enjoy you know it too, yeah. everything connects everything locks it's just uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
So when things. we started this whole thing, you guys got, the three of you got a lock, and Dennis starts, you know, put Gary next to my hi-hat and turn him up. <laughs> <laughs> this project kind of reminds me of, um, like the first time I mentioned to you, mm -hmm. say, hey, I want to do a bass orchestra. Oh, I want okay. eight bass players on stage. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. do, and you say like, Hoop. <laughs> well, that's where this idea came from. He put this bass orchestra together with eight bass players and they got a lock. So, we didn't know so you'd get a lock. The whole secret is the people yeah. that you work with. Because, of course, that could be a, a cluster. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> because, you know, if people don't listen, it can get very, you know, complicated and very confusing and sounding on stage or, or you know in the studio or whatever so that's the secret is the, is the personnel I, I must call everybody and thank them over and over again because it always gets better because you have ears like this attacking the music you know I'm, I'm blown away that I'm even in the middle of the whole thing I never imagined my whole life I would be in the middle of something like this but what do you think there's, Michael about all this modern day there's so many guitar overdubs this gives us a chance to just play all the stuff that we do live you know yeah. everybody has a different kind of section to to play mm. you know you play the, the the power chords and the solos I play the uh, you know the syncopated mm. rhythms and Bill plays the Leslie kind of yeah, cool. kind of you know pads kind of stuff and you know Mia on, on top of everything, it's going to be great, but the rhythm section is just going to be phenomenal. So, Bill, in that in that one part where she sang by herself in Echoes, the only guitar player left on was you. Did you yeah, notice that? Did everyone pass out? No. <laughs> <laughs> Your part was the sauce that it needed underneath, so it wasn't just her and, her and the bass. Well, on, on all the recordings, the tones from the guitar, the tones that you get for the guitars are just magnificent. Well, that's and, fun. Playing through to Leslie, it just it sounds heaven. I can't believe it sounds like that. But I, I think the thing that's going to happen is it, it, the live performances are going to be it. And you talk about standing in between the drums when the guns go off. If you're there when everybody's playing and it is locked in the way it's going to be, yeah. it's it's a sensory experience that you just can't equal. I wish everyone could be on the stage and feel it. It's going to feel tremendous. I mean, yeah. just tremendous. The recordings are great, but the live performance is going to be unbelievable. Yeah. There's a, one other thing that is important to me, and that is that playing with the Granger Brothers, I hear the remnants of Baltimore Funk, although I didn't grow up in the middle of it. And it upsets me that there was this extraordinary thing in Baltimore, which was this funk thing, and you hear remnants of it in Parliament Funkadelic and you know I hear remnants of it all the time when you play and I hear remnants of it when you play but I wasn't in the middle of it and then I got to play in Chuck's band with Juju and so really this band is is the Baltimore Washington Parkway we're, we're trying to hook together some of the old funk from Baltimore and and the go-go thing and hook it together and to me it's important um, that this music from our towns doesn't go away and I'd like to see it be noticed again you know uh, how many musicians have come to dc and stolen gogo -Go and left right oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and the musicians in baltimore are so good they end up leaving town and playing with other people mia was in the gospel choir at three and a full-time member of six because her mother was a piano player i mean that's important to me that that the the music that was developed amongst the musicians of baltimore and dc lives does that mean anything to you dennis in terms of the baltimore funk thing coming back yeah, it means something to me. I mean, especially when you see all the talent that that came out of here, right? And um, a lot of them in the past, even now, they they never went anywhere. But they were great, great musicians that had a, a definite sound. They had their own personalities, mm -hmm. and these are the people that we grew up listening to. You know, like the Ralph Fishers and the, oh wow, yeah. uh, Billy Murphy. But you also had uh, you had people who came through it, you know, like Sonny Stitt, Freddie Freddie Hubbard, and right. those guys. Who, I mean, I saw Sonny Stitt stop the band one time and told the drummer, "You need to go home and think about it." <laughs> <laughs> so, if that don't tighten you, up. But that's a school. Yeah. That will tighten. You. I like think that. about it. I'm gonna show you all something. Hold on a second. So Dennis, I don't know if you know this, but Chuck used to come to all our rehearsals and all our recordings when we were a young band, and he was looking after us, and he demanded that I put this picture up in this studio. 
and he loves this place because he goes, eh, best headphones I've heard. <laughs> um, um, and, and sometimes I feel like he's around, Juju. Absolutely. We building something here. Right. It's that spirit. I mean, nobody has seen three drummers from three totally different styles and being able to play with the musicians. We're creating something that the world has never seen or heard. Musical discovery. Yeah. yeah. She's singing rock, funk, and then putting it in a melting pot. Well, one thing you gotta say, I mean, you got three drums, yeah. three guitars and a bass. Yeah. You gotta have some serious power to be out singing. I mean, we got the greatest singer on the planet in front of us, I think. Wow. I mean, to the front of all this yeah. is, uh, yeah. There's a CD It's going to be released in the spring. And we are proud of it, and we've worked really hard, and the whole idea here is there's not one average tune. We're trying to put 10 gems in the can. And we're going to have a CD release party in the spring, and we are laying for planned festivals, and we can't wait to do it. My God, what fun this will be. Yeah, it's going to be nice. Yeah, can't wait to see everybody. Yeah. yeah. Eight lock. I'm Paul. <laughs> oh, come on, that's a good. That was good. We gotta give you that. <laughs>